Hey, Steve Zook, welcome back to Pogue Suit Channel and the Guitar Ladder System. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really having fun playing this uh, Epiphone Dot 335. This is not a normal Dot 335. I've played a million of them. This one just has so much tone, just a lot of vibe and a lot of mojo. It's just got really good mid range and mid bass and uh, a lot of body to it. I think it was probably made in the 90s in Korea, possibly made in the Peerless Factory. It's just, I mean, you play you play this guitar, and this isn't sales bullshit, this is this is true, I know guitars, guys. You Guys and gals, right? You play this guitar, and then you play like a normal, you know, 335 dot, and it's just night and day. This one has so much more depth. Almost reminds me of a, of a solid uh, top guitar. This is not a guitar you can just hop in your car and go to 10 music stores and find it. It's really a tough guitar to find. And the, the label doesn't say anything about Made in China or anything. There is a serial number, but uh, it's a big, huge, long one uh, on one of my other videos. I'll just read it to you. It's not always accurate, though. 1210231010. One, oh, oh, uh, seven, seven. But you can't always judge a guitar by serial number. A lot of people have trouble understanding that because sometimes... Uh, Sometimes the serial number has to do more with where they're storing the guitar, and there's lots of variables. But um, yeah, this is this is. I've owned Gibson 59 345s. I've owned Gibson 335s. I've owned 347s. I've owned a lot of guitars, being 66 and playing since I was seven. But uh, this really is a nice box, and uh, the neck angle is really nice, and it just just has so much tone. It's incredible. <laughs> strings. I think I'll talk. Last time I was talking a little bit about this, I was showing a little progression, kind of chord families with this. And then, or, you know, taking it other places. But I think I want to talk a little bit about picking technique right now, some exercises. Plus, it's just fun to play this guitar. I don't play a lot with distortion, but but when I find a guitar that really has a sound, it's kind of fun. It's just working double triplets. I'm kind of working off a G major scale, but I'm adding another note on the third string. Kind of, you kind of, if, if you think the accent on the first note, but don't go out of your way to play the first note real hard, it gives you a reference point, technically speaking, and helps you uh, get the flow going. So it's kind of a hard thing to explain. Let me just give myself a tad more volume here. But yeah, I'm really going to miss this guitar. I'll go 475 when this one does not have a case, but... This is not a garage sale price, but this is a lot of guitar for 475. Really has a sound. Anyway, double triplets. You try to think of this whole thing as one idea. Can hear that you can kind of hear the difference this is again hard to explain if I go kind of obvious I'm just thinking that and but if I kind of, okay another good one is So three, and then two. And you, as usual, you can always mix stuff up and have fun, but getting the, I like that three, kind of like triplets to eighth of.
Now, I may not always stick straight to what I'm explaining. I may not be exactly triplets to eighth notes. That's the whole point, kind of, too. I really love this guitar, though. It just really... Uh, But it's really, it's really fun to work on your picking technique, both on acoustic guitar. I work it on acoustic steel string and nylon string. But you start getting a, a certain sound. It takes me about an hour to warm up. I'm not warmed up now. So I'm not going to try to play my fastest. It's more about giving you a nice exercise to work on, like these double triplets. This is my A. I may not be right to concert pitch. You can just do two strings. You start getting kind of a whipping sound. It's very hard to kind of go. But anyway, and then like I said, the one with the with the triplets and eighth of And, uh, and working like triads, you know. You know, don't just work on your guitar and just the, just the pentatonic and major and minor scales and all that kind of stuff. Try to be a little more intervallic. Here's a really nice little intervallic riff. It's off this old Charlie Parker diminished. But I kind of chromaticize it and mess with it. I kind of bring it down the neck a little more. Slide though. But anyway, like the double trumpets are really good for your right hand. No reason to go fast. You can even do it like this. Every time you do that, you're getting a lot out. You go a little quicker. Repetition is the mother of mastery. Then the other idea was that uh, the triplets to the eighth notes. I know I don't stick exactly strict on the eighth note sometimes. Yeah, those double triples are real good for you. You can also just do eighth notes. These are real good for your right. What you'll find is when you do the triplets and the eighth notes, sometimes you'll just be doing triplets and you'll just fall on the eighth notes and you'll go back and forth. I'm not going to try to show that because it's hard to do it when I'm not 
not more warmed up. Um, but yeah, more inner valley. And uh, yeah, this guitar has such a beautiful, beautiful clean sound. That's really the acid test of a great guitar. Four chord, 13 flat nine, four chord, four chord, 13 flat nine, four chord, 13 flat nine. I think this is like, you know, it's hard for me to talk. It's, it's like a, uh, a dominant uh, with a flat five. But yeah, it all comes together, like I said, in the chord families. You start to just hear the color of how chords want to go together. That's why the guitar ladder system is so important. It gives you, it gives those billions and billions of neurons and neurotransmitters in your subconscious mind something to do. <laughs> and it helps you make tremendous progress too. But yeah, this guitar really has a tone. I think I've only had two of these in the last, you know, four or five years. I mean, really, really good Epiphone dots that have the vibe, and there's a little bit of weight to it because I think it has that solid mahogany down the middle. Most, most of the Epiphone dots are pretty cool. They just really lack mids and mid bass, and oftentimes the pickups really suck on them. But uh, they're, they're, they're not bad guitars, you know? But again, I've said a million times that great guitars are few and far between. Here's a study, my famous waterfall leg. I'll send it to you for free along with another guitar ladder study so you'll get two. But this is a cup starts off a few octaves. G major seven, then it comes down six, seven, eight arpeggios. Reminds me a little bit of a Bach approach. Kind of a 13 flat nine idea. Come down diminish. Sometimes I'll double up on that. But yeah, I'll send you 77 for free if you want. But anyway, if you want, uh, you know, like I said, working the right hand is really, really important. As well as working legato. But anyway, try those double triplets. I'll have to warm up for an hour and do this, maybe do some of these ideas again. It's just hard for me to play it full, you know, full throttle. But my, the, the point of this video more anyway is how to practice for developing techniques. So you want to play slower and uh, nice and clean. Get to think about that accent. You can accent a little bit in the first. I know I'm not sticking to the straight, uh, you know, G major scale or, or an Ionian mode or whatever. I, I don't really explain modes to my students in that way. I think it confuses people. The important thing to learn is just tonal centers and what, you know, you know what, what scales go with what chords because of the sharps and the flats and whatnot and what key you're in. Kind of coming into a, a harmonic minor idea at that point. I like that just doing the diminish. You kind of go into a, a, a chromatic kind of a thing. But anyway, yeah, double triplets are great to work.
But yeah, this guitar really has a tone. It's got just a beautiful, beautiful clean. It's got an amazing uh, jazz sound. Nice setup, really nice neck angle they put into this guitar. This is not an easy guitar to find. I can go 475. I'm really gonna miss this one, that's not bullshit. camera a little closer to that kind of intervallic idea. Yeah, I didn't do anything. Good. That's that kind of Martino approach. I know I'm doing a lot of, covering a lot of ground here today, but that's all right. And again, like that last exercise in the last video, kind of a nice chord family. But this guitar just sparkles, boy. It has so much body, I love it. Check on that again. Yeah, I don't see anything good. Anyway, that's from an old Charlie Parker riff. So yeah, this guitar is available. It's boy, somebody took really good care of this guitar. <coughs> As you can tell. It's got it's really hard to show these on the camera now, but it's got some bird's eyes on the back. I know it's very difficult to see those probably. But it's got some really pretty little bird's eyes, tons of fret. I don't really think this guitar was played much. Really nice kind of medium sized neck. It's not a huge neck, but it's not too thin. It's got just enough meat on it. And if you don't realize it, uh, necks add to the sound, they really do. And that bi chord to the major 13 flat five, which gives you some contrary motion. Because here, see, the bass goes down, the treble goes up. Now, right about here, I would want to introduce something else. But yeah, the more you experiment, the better off you'll be. The more chord studies you do, the better off you'll be. The more <coughs> chordal work you do, the more you're gonna wake up your musical mind, it's really true. Well, this is gonna be a long video, so I better stop. I know, some of these strings are stretching out a little bit, I'm not going to worry about it. But you can hear how much tone this guitar has. You can almost shake hands with it. Travel pickup. stop trying to show the bird's eyes in the back of this i'm really going to miss this but anyway this is really I, i'd put this up against even gibson 335s i know some people think that's bullshit it's not people out there have been playing for 30 years know what i'm talking about great guitars are few and far between <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
All right, folks, take care. Let's all stay positive. Ciao.